Hello, my name is Dr. Gerald Chodak. In this video, I want to review with you the various things that can be done to help you if you are facing urinary incontinence. Uh, one of the things that happens after our treatments is that urinary leakage may occur when you don't want it. After surgery, you would normally get incontinent right away and over time you would improve. With radiation and some of the other treatments, you may have no leakage right away and only find the radiation would cause the incontinence later on. So those are differences between the timing. Now, it's important for you to be aware that things are available to help you. So let's start off in the case of surgery. You've undergone the operation, you've had your catheter removed, what do you do because you're leaking three or four pads a day for some period of time? First, realize that it's a gradual improvement. It doesn't happen right away in many cases. Sometimes it does, most times it does not. We can't give you an exact date when it's going to completely resolve. But generally we say that if you've had surgery, whatever you're going to recover could take up to one year after the treatment. So what do you do? Do you have to endure a lot of incontinence for that whole time? The answer is no. Two things that we can offer you, three things that we can offer you. Number one, be careful what you're ingesting. If you're taking caffeinated drinks, they cause you to make more urine. And if you drink a lot of liquids, it causes you to make more urine. Same thing is true of beer. So be aware that you may have to either cut down on the amount that you're drinking or just go to the bathroom earlier than you might have otherwise gone. Don't wait until your bladder is completely over distended because that's going to force some urinary leakage. Another thing you can do is we can try you on a medication called an anticholinergic medication because in some cases your bladder is hyperactive and it's squeezing when you don't want it to. So relaxing the bladder can help reduce some of the leakage. Another thing to be done in the short term is to use a clamp. A clamp device has been developed that squeezes the penis and shuts off the leakage and it works pretty well. You have to find the right amount of squeezing that will make it tight enough to stop the leakage but not too tight to cause pain or cut off your blood supply. But it's certainly something that can be done in the relatively short time while you're waiting for your own body to heal and to recover. Now, if you've waited an appropriate amount of time and you're still left with leakage, then we still have some options for you. The less extensive procedure is called a male sling operation, and it has been evolving over a number of years. Most recently, a new one has developed called the Advance System, and in that, a mesh, a silicone mesh, is inserted inside your body to support the urethra and make it harder for urine to leak out. Uh, we're waiting to see the results of an international trial. Preliminary results suggest that it may be very helpful, but it's going to take longer follow-up to know how long does it last, how many people recur over time, and exactly which patients are most likely to get the best result. If you have extensive urinary leakage, maybe three pads, four pads, or more per day, the sling may not do as good a job as if you're facing only having one or two pads. What's the downside about it? Well, you can get some pain because screws are inserted into your bones inside your body. That's a possibility and it may deteriorate over time, which is also a possibility. And lastly, you may have a small risk of infection because you've got this artificial mesh inside your body. But one of the advantages is that once the procedure is done and you're, you've gone home, you're recovering from your surgery, you'll know right away how effective it's going to be. Now, if it doesn't work or if you have just too much leakage to be a good candidate for that, then we can offer you something called the urinary sphincter. Now this sphincter has been around for a number of years and it has a very clever design. There is an artificial cuff also made of silicone which is inserted inside your body around the urethra near the bottom of the penis. And it is filled up with fluid. That fluid and that device is connected by a small tube 
into a pump device that's located in your scrotum. And so what you would do when you want to urinate is you would simply squeeze this pump through the scrotal wall. That would relax the fluid or remove the fluid from this cuff and that would make it possible for you to urinate and then the cuff will fill up again over 30 to 45 seconds. And that device works very well for those men that are having three or four or five pads of leakage per day. If you have such extensive leakage that you're needing six, seven, eight, nine pads a day, this may not significantly prevent leakage, although it should improve you. In some cases, doctors actually will use two of these cuffs around the urethra in very bad cases of leakage to increase the chance that it's going to help you. But studies have shown that even in cases of very severe leakage, where you don't eradicate completely all of the leakage, men find that their quality of life is still significantly improved. You take a very bad situation and make it more manageable. Now, what are the downsides? Well, number one, uh, it could take up to six weeks before we let you use it because we want the tissues to heal. Now, one of the side effects can be the cuff may erode into the urethra. And if that were to occur, we would have to take it out, let you heal, and then consider replacing it at another time. Uh, also, there's a small chance for infection, and there's a chance that the thing just stops working over time. The rates of those depend on many factors, your age, your health, cancer, uh, how good your surgeon is, and so you want to try and find someone who has enough experience doing this that you get the best chance possible. So those are all the options available. We are making progress all the time, and we're concerned not only with curing your cancer, but improving your quality of life. And if you are struggling with incontinence, make sure to ask your doctor about these different options available and which one might be suitable to you so that we end up not just treating the cancer, but helping you resume your quality of life as close to normal as possible. Thank you.